This is Dr. Katie Bailey. I'm going to be talking about the basics of spine interpretation. The goal is a three-minute review of the basics of non-contrast spine CT and MRI interpretation based on what I call the ABCDEs of spine. The ABCDE stands for alignment, bones, cord slash cauda equina, discs slash discitis, and then E is everything outside the spine. When you talk about alignment, you're talking about list thesis, and you always describe what the level above is doing to the level below. So here at L5-S1, you would describe this as anterolisthesis of L5 over S1. You would not describe it as retrolisthesis of S1 over L5. By convention, it's always the level above to the level below. Scoliosis, by convention, we describe by which way the curve is pointing towards or which way the convexity is. So this would be dextroscoliosis if it's pointing to the right. It would be levoscoliosis if it were pointing to the left. When you have scoliosis, you can also describe a lateral translation. Here you would say there is lateral translation of L3 over L4 because the lateral vertebral bodies do not line up. When discussing alignment, don't forget C1-2. The lateral masses of C1 should line up with the lateral masses of C2. On x-ray, you can see a C1 ring fracture because the lateral masses of C1 fall off the sides of C2. So you can see one cortex here and one on the other. B stands for bones, and this term you use for CT would be lucent if it's lower density than the bone. It would be sclerotic if it's higher density than the bone. You would describe bone destruction. So here's a fracture line, so a lucent line within the edge of the vertebral body, and you can describe height loss of the vertebral body. On MRI, you describe these as marrow replacing lesions. So you describe the appearance of the signal on T1, T2, and STIR. So this would be hypo intense on T1, hypo intense T2, hyper intense on STIR, classic appearance of osseous metastatic disease. This can be done with or without contrast. I usually prefer STIR sequence to look for osseous metastases because they tend to be bright. C stands for cord or cauda equina. The cone should terminate around L12. Below L23 is considered low lying. The cauda equina should be homogeneous in size and signal and be dependently in the thecal sac when somebody's lying backwards. You should see a little bit of CSF between each of these. I like to say spaghetti strings and they should fall back. The cord should be homogeneously in signal as well and it should have a nice oval shape. D stands for discs and discitis. Degenerative disc disease is a whole other discussion, but you have bulges, protrusions, extrusions, sequestrations. So here are some protrusions, some bulges. But what we're talking here about is discitis, which is infection in the disc and end plates. T2 and STIR are your best friends because pus is hyper intense on T2. So here is discitis at L4 or 5 with pus in the disc space extending into the epidural space. And the neurosurgery usually wants post contrast imaging. So you can see enhancement around the pus within the disc as well as enhancement of those epidural soft tissues. So the D, you're looking for disc disease and discitis. E stands for everything outside the spine. So in the cervical spine, you're evaluating any vessels in the carotid sheath. So you have the carotid, you have the jug, you have the verts. You're looking at salivary glands, thyroid gland. So here's a thyroid gland mass seen incidentally on a C-spine. You're looking at the mucosal surfaces of what you can see of the aerodigestive tract. You can see the lung apices looking for something like a pancose tumor as you see here. The upper posterior ribs, which can also tell you about a pancose tumor. Whatever you can see of the posterior fossa. And sometimes you get anteriorly enough to see the paranasal sinuses. In the thoracic spine, you evaluate the thoracic aorta, looking for something like a dissection. You can evaluate what you see of the mediastinum, looking for adenopathy or masses, any kind of airway obstruction. You can see the esophagus right here. The lungs, here you have airspace disease in the right lower lobe and somebody with referred pain to their back. You can see those proximal posterior ribs and the paraspinous musculature. In the lumbar spine, you're looking at the aorta and its branches. You'd like to see a nice dark flow void. Here's an aneurysm of the celiac artery origin. Here's the SMA origin looking more normal. You can see pathology involving the IVC, the renal veins, the renal arteries, the kidneys. Here's a kidney stone incidentally on a spine MRI. Here's hydronephosis on the other side in a different patient. You can see portions of the adrenal glands, the pancreas, some of the bowel, portion of the pelvis on a lumbar spine, and that paraspinous musculature. So remember your E, everything outside the spine. Thank you for your attention.